Hello, my name is Lizzie Karen and welcome to the channel I've created on my dreams of Atlantis. This episode is the second in a series about the stonework or stone cutting of the ancients. It's all basically all the information I've gleaned from my many dream regressions throughout my lifetime. In the previous episode, we addressed the sorts of locations that the ancients preferred. But this time, we're going to look at the specific building techniques. First of all, we're going to look at the polygonal block construction techniques. So here we go. Polygonal block construction was one of the easiest and strongest ways for building things. It was very good in areas with a tendency for earthquakes. I've already spoken about ground preparation in episode one, so I won't repeat it. But once the area to be built on was prepared, the ancients had a choice of several ways of actually building on the site. But I will describe the typical approach for the polygonal um, masonry. And other possibilities based on this will probably become quite clear. So often we would start with some random, very large boulders, shape them a little for the right look and to ensure the sides would be a goodish fit next to each other. So imagining them lying in a straight line for where we wanted them to go onto the already pre-prepared ground. So as we put a, the first boulder in place, it would become the starter for how we had put the others in place. So if you have a look at the example that I've used in the picture, um, you'll see that I've colored in blue the, the boulder that would be the one that we tend, would tend to start with. So I just chose this site because it had a lot of really good um, examples of what I want to talk about. So once we've got the first boulder in the right place, and it's a nice, big, solid starting point, then we can uh, prepare the next boulder. And once we put that, we get that one ready to put it into place, we would use a softening agent on one side of the second boulder. And uh, once it had softened the area sufficiently, then the second boulder would be put in place and pushed hard against the first boulder and any seepage from between the boulders would then have to be scraped out to ensure the boulders do not stick so a membrane was used to make it easier but if no membrane was available then the boulders may simply be parted while the wet one dries and then once dry it would be put back in place this process would be done again and again until the base level was completed. So it was basically using genuine block, natural blocks softened on one side and just added to the, the base. So added to, then added to, and then added to, okay? Until there was the full bottom level completed. Now, I've mentioned a couple of things already, which I have to come back and touch on. So if you want a description of what the membranes look like and how they were made, you need to let me know in the comments section because I can do an episode on that. The membranes are quite interesting, but I suspect that some of the later civilizations didn't actually have that facility available to them. And the other thing that I want to go back to is the point that I made about when the stone softening was used, they pushed the stones together and sometimes some of the softened area would protrude out. So basically it would squish out between the blocks. So they didn't want that there. So while it was still soft, they would use a ruler, kind of like a ruler, um, or a, something that they could scrape uh, that part of the rock away. And this can be quite clearly seen in, in many places. So we've talked about the ground level and how it is essentially using natural rock. But as I mentioned before, there are other methods that uh, it could equally have been done using the manufactured 
rock. Anyway, the next levels going up were usually a combination of natural rock and manufactured rock, with the manufactured rock being made of the same components as the natural because they came from the same source materials. So what to call the manufactured rock? Uh, well, I'm not a geologist and I really know absolutely nothing about this except for what I see in my dream regressions. So I may use incorrect terms. I tried to look up the correct terms and I came up with the term geopolymer or concrete. So if I'm wrong about what to call it, please let me know in the comments below. So just to make it easier for me to describe, uh, let's just assume that the next layer will be the manufactured rock. But in reality, it was probably a mixture of natural and manufactured. Okay, so from there, we would use the pre-ground rock mix. Uh, there were agents added to it, um, but I can't tell you what they were. Of course, I simply don't know. Anyway, it ended up being much like concrete, but it didn't need mixing. Not like concrete needs mixing. In my dream regressions, we use the membranes. So I'm going to have to describe the technique using the membranes because I didn't in any of my dreams do it without the membranes. So please forgive me for having to use that particular technique because I just don't know any better really. Um, so we had these membranes and they looked like rubber balloons um, and we used those to hold the mixture in place. And once we put the mixture in, water was added and we also used flat boards to achieve a desired shape if, if necessary. And the whole block might be artificial or it might be a combination of the wet mix with some dry rocks which could be put in to fill out the center part. That made it quite a lot quicker and, and less effort. But there was a downside. It was not as strong, and so it was very, very important to ensure that the, the fill, the rocks, the dry rocks that went in, did not touch any of the sides, including the bottom of the artificial block, because that weakened it even more. So in order to make sure that the rocks inside the new block didn't weaken the structure, that is by touching any of the sides or, or the bottom, then slats of wood would be temporarily inserted into the newly forming block creation in order to keep the internal rocks away from the sides. So once the block was sufficiently dry to retain its general shape, the membrane would be cut just at where it was necessary, where the wood was, and the wooden slats would be pulled out. Because they were removed before the, drop, the block had fully dried out too much, the mix had the opportunity to be backfilled into the area. Uh, sometimes this left nubs sticking out, where the residual wet mix had uh, come out of the area and sometimes it left like a, a hole, an area going inwards. So sometimes you see bits sticking out and sometimes you see areas where it's sticking inwards. The mixture had to be perfect, too dry and it crumbled over time and too wet meant it wouldn't solidify and we had to drain the blocks by once again cutting into the membrane. This didn't happen very often, but it may have occurred more frequently by people who were not good at getting the mix just right. So that would be when they're using a technique at a later time maybe, and they were working using residual knowledge that they had. So um, I'm just guessing on that front. So based on what I've just been telling you, there were two ways that a block might end up with some strange nubs sticking out of it. Sometimes uh, they might be removed or flattened before they became fully dry, and other times they were just left as is. 
There was another technique that involved stone softening, but it wasn't used very often in my dream regressions. But once again, that means that there's more than one way of doing it. And um, hence, I explained the preferred way first. So now I will address the alternative way, which is, in my opinion, quite a bit more effort. So the boulders would be roughly shaped to plan as per the first process that I described. But instead of switching to the manufactured blocks as you work your way up from the base level, all the sides were softened and then placed. The softening agent I can tell you more about because I do remember about this in more detail. It was a special solution of a tree sap and bird droppings. So this was, as I said, a lot more work in several respects. So it required a lot more of the softening agent and this was a time consuming process to prepare it. It also, it required every side of a newly placed boulder to be softened. So they were, uh, one side was softened, it was placed tightly against the starter um, block. Then it had to be removed, dried, and then the next side of that same block had to be softened, placed, made sure it was pushed tightly, removed, then dried, and then the next side. So it, it was very time consuming, and it was much more tricky if the blocks were very large. Another um, aspect to how much work it was is that the areas between the boulders where the solution was on the boulder for softening, um, it would get soft and allow um, it to be pushed against the previous block to achieve a very tight fit. But this, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes resulted in an ugly looking squishy bit at the joints. So this area had to be flattened. It looked a lot nicer than the squishy stuff sticking out, but more importantly, it enabled the masons to uh, check that the seal was sufficiently tight between the blocks. If they left the squishy there, they couldn't see if they'd actually made a tight seal or not. So that, in a nutshell, is the polygonal building process. Uh, the next episode, we'll talk about the standardised megalithic site construction rather than the irregular polygonal blocks. Um, but they were similar in some ways. Uh, by the way, I do realise that um, the large polygonal block construction is also... Um, often megalithic. So um, I did realize that it's just, I should have said that at the start. I didn't, never mind. There is still heaps and heaps more to cover on the building process, the, the stone cutting, um, the machines are yet to come up. They'll be in a future episode. Uh, all kinds of things I'll be able to talk to you about. Um, but this episode has ended up getting a bit long. So I'm going to finish at this point and look out for the next one on stone cutting which will be episode three and the next one as I said will be on the standardized block cutting um, so I will catch you all next time thank you bye